Hi, this is Tamara from MowgliVlog.com, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make the mini magic mandala square that you will find on MowgliVlog.com. It's a free pattern, again, on MowgliVlog.com, so if you want the written instructions or detailed instructions, you'll want to go there. For this video, I'll be using Red Heart Creme de la Creme, which is 100% cotton, and a U.S. Eye Hook by Susan Bates. Let's get started. I'm going to begin with the orange color here, bright orange. Let me find my end. I may have twisted up a little tightly here. Oh, there we go. All right. And this pattern begins with a magic circle. So if you don't know how to work a magic circle, you can find a video for that on the moogloblog.com YouTube channel or on moogloblog.com itself. But once I've got my magic circle started, I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, oops, dropped it off the hook there. Let's try that again. Three and four. And those four chains count as a double crochet and chain one. Then I am going to double crochet and chain one in the ring seven more times. So even though we actually begin with a chain four, we count that as a double crochet and a chain one, so that'll be like having eight double crochets and chain ones in the circle. So a chain one, yarn over, go right into the center of the magic ring there. Magic ring, magic circle, same thing. Two different names. And I'm going to double crochet. Chain one. And I'm going to continue doing that until I have eight double crochets and eight chain ones all the way around. So I'll see you as soon as I have that done. Okay, so we've got eight double crochets followed by a chain one. So what I'm going to do now is pull the loose end of the magic circle here to tighten up that ring nice and tight. And when I weave in that end, I'm going to be sure to go around the circle with it and back through using my tapestry needle to really keep that magic ring secure so it doesn't pull open. Then I am going to slip stitch in the third of those chain of the four chains there. So that would be like the top of our double crochet. Remember it's a double crochet chain one. Working into the chain is always a little tricky. There we go. I'll go ahead and slip stitch. And that's the end of round one. So for round two, we're going to start with a chain three, which counts again as our first double crochet, then two double crochet in the next chain space. So that's right there where the chain one is. We're just going to go right into that space. You don't have to work into that fiddly chain itself. And in that chain space, I will work two double crochets like so. There we are. Then. I am going to double crochet in the next double crochet, so that one right here, going right into that under both loops of the V there, like so. And then again, I will work, I'm going to pull up a little bit more yarn here, I will work two more double crochets in the next chain space. So anytime you find a double crochet, work a double crochet in it. You find a chain space, work two double crochets in it. So here we are at the next double crochet. So I double crochet right in that. And then we're at the next chain space. So I'll work two double crochets there. And continue on around until we have 24 double crochets in this round. And remember, of course, that includes that chain three that we began with. So I'll see you when I get to the end of this round. All right, so I've made 24 double crochets in round two. So now we're done with color A. I'm going to pull up that loop slightly and put down my hook. Then I'll use my scissors to go ahead and cut the yarn, leaving enough to weave in later. There we are. And normally I would actually weave as I go, but I won't make you watch me weave in all these ends. But I do want to show how I like to finish these off. Now I'm going to, as you can see, I didn't slip stitch yet. I didn't finish off this round. I just pulled that end of the yarn straight through. I'm going to thread it on my needle here. And then rather than going into the top of the chain three, I'm going to go into the next double crochet itself. Normally if I were finishing off with a slip stitch, I would go ahead and slip stitch here. 
And I'm gonna go into the top of the first real double crochet, even though we're counting that as a double crochet there, the chain three. Going under both loops with my needle from front to back. Then I'm gonna come back around, go down the center of the last stitch, the one we came from there, where that yarn is originating. I'm gonna poke the needle through there and pull through until I have created essentially a false V there on top of our chain three. And that'll be a lot easier to work into in the next round and it maintains our stitch count for the next round as well. You can see that looks pretty good. So, like I say, normally I would go ahead and weave in these ends. For now, I'm just gonna tuck it in there so it stays out of our way and get started with round three. There we are. So for round three, I'll go ahead and pull in a new color. There it is, the green that we saw earlier. Pull up a little bit of length here. And then with my needle, I am going to join with a slip stitch to the top of one of the double crochet stitches that is worked into a double crochet. So that means not one of the double crochets that's worked into the chain space, but rather one of the double crochets that's worked into another double crochet. And I like to actually do this away from the chain three before because this breaks up the line and doesn't create one visible seam throughout the piece. So I am going to put my hook into one of the double crochets that's worked into a double crochet under both loops there. And then I'll grab my yarn and pull up a loop. And there I've got it gone ahead and started working into that stitch. So at this point, I am going to chain one to make sure that it's on there securely. All right, and then I'm going to work a spike stitch into the top of the double crochet from round one directly below. So remember, this is a double crochet worked into a double crochet. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into the top of the double crochet from round one. And I want to do this somewhat loosely. I don't want to crush round two. But from the behind, I'll grab my loop, my working yarn there, and pull it up nice and high. Again, we don't want to crush round two here. And then I will yarn over and finish off. And I've got one spike stitch there. Then I will single crochet in the next single crochet, which is one of the ones worked into the chain space. Just a standard single crochet. Then I'm going to single crochet between the posts. And this is something that trips people up in this pattern and in the larger, larger Magic Spike Mandala pattern. I'm going to go right between the posts, almost as if I were to post stitch, but I'm not going to post stitch. I'm going to go straight between those two posts from front to back and straight out the back. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and single crochet. So that's a single crochet between the posts. Then for my next single crochet, I'm going to go under both loops of the next single crochet. So you can see that's kind of a, a type of increase in a way. I'm adding an extra stitch in between these two stitches. Then I'm back at a double crochet that is worked into another double crochet, so I know it's time to spike stitch. So I'm gonna go straight down into the top of the stitch from round one, pull up that loop nice and high for a nice spike stitch, yarn over and finish it off. Then single crochet into the next double crochet, then single crochet between the posts, and we'll go right on down between those two posts, pull up a loop and yarn over, single crochet in the next single crochet, and then we're back at a double crochet worked into double crochet, so I'll do another spike stitch. I'll show you that one more time. We go right into the top of that stitch from round one, pull up our loop nice and high, yarn over, and finish it. And if you find that it's pulling down too tight on round two, you can always pull that stitch right out and do it again. There we are. Single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet between the posts, like so, single crochet in the next stitch. And then it's time for another spike stitch, and we'll continue that all the way around. And I'll see you when I get to the end of round three. All right, so here we are at the end of round three. 
you can see I've worked eight spike stitches as well as eight sets of single crochet, single crochet in between, single crochet. So we have 32 stitches total at the end of round three. Now I'm going to slip stitch, join to the very first spike stitch we made to finish it off, like so, and then we're ready to start round four. Round four is pretty easy. We're going to chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, which is the same stitch we joined to there. There we go, single crochet. Then we chain four, one, two, three, four. Skip three stitches, one, two, three, so those three little single crochets there, and then single crochet in the next sp stitch, which is that spike stitch again. Very easy to follow. Chain four, let's see, four, there we are. Skip three, single crochet in the next stitch. On around, so in the end, we will have eight chain four loops. So I'll go ahead and make mine, and you can go ahead and make yours. All right, so we've come to the end of round four. You can see I have finished my last chain four, and I have seven finished loops here, single crochets and all the spike stitches. But instead of slip stitching at this point, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is cut the yarn again. Stick my hook behind my ear. All right. And then I will take my trusty yarn needle, pull that loop on through of the yarn, and then just as before, I'm going to join it. Now, because I'm working from a series of chains, it's easier for this one to just go ahead and join to the single crochet rather than joining to the next stitch, um, because I also have know what happens in the next round and I know we're going to be working into those chain spaces not into the individual chain so I'm not so worried about actual stitch count if I was really worried and I still wanted to if I still wanted to join to that single crochet then I would just skip one of the chains of the chain four here at the end and count this as one of the chain fours but again I know what happens in the next round and I know it's okay to go ahead and join to that single crochet like so and then of course I would weave in these ends so that I don't have to do them later, but for now, I'll just go ahead and slide it under some stitches to secure it and get it out of the way. Like so. And now we've got our eight chain four loops. They're working close right now, but we can pull them out and work right into those. So let's pick up the orange again. This pattern can be made with anywhere from two to four colors easily. I'm just gonna use the same two over and over here, I think. So to begin, I am going to start round five here. I will join with a slip stitch to the top of a chain of a single crochet. So I just pick one of the single crochets. Again, I like to move around the square so I don't line up any of my seams. Right now it's a circle, but it'll be a square eventually. So I'll go ahead and chain one to get our slip stitch on there nice and tight. Then I am going to chain one again to get our height and single crochet right in the top of that single crochet. Then within the chain space, this chain four space, I'm going to work two half double crochets. There's one, there's two, followed by a chain one, and then two more half double crochets. One and two. As you can see, there's plenty of room in that chain four. Let me pull up a little bit more yarn here. You can see. So we've got a single crochet in the single crochet, two half double crochets, chain one, two half double crochets worked into that chain four space. We'll do that one more time together here. I'm going to single crochet in that single crochet. Then in the chain four space, I'll work one, two half double crochets, chain one, then two more half double crochets. One, whoops, there we go, and two. And then just continue that on around. So I'll see you when we get to the end of the round five. All right, so here we are at the end of round five. I've got two half double crochets, chain one, two half double crochets in each chain space, and a single crochet in the top of each single crochet. 
So what I'm going to do to finish off is slip stitch to the first single crochet here to finish off round five, and then we'll begin round six. I'm going to chain one and single crochet back in that first stitch again, the one we just joined to. There we are. Then I'm going to skip the first two half double crochets. And then we've got that chain one space there. It's okay to pull your stitches apart if you need to to find it. I am going to work six half double crochets in that chain one space. So we yarn over, insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. That's one. And do five more all in that chain one space. That's two, three, four, there we are, five, and six. There, six half, half double crochets all in the chain one space. Then I find that next single crochet, worked into the single crochet from the previous round, single crochet in there, whoops, there we are, and then go to the next chain one space. Skip two half double crochets, go to the chain one space, it works six half double crochets in there. And then I'll just continue like that on around until I get to the end of round six. So I'll see you at the end of this round. All right, so we've come to the end of round six, and at the end of round six, you should have 56 stitches. So I am ready to cut my yarn. So just as before, I'll use my scissors. That's usually the best way to cut yarn. Pull up the loop here and work my I like to call it seamless finishing. I've heard a couple of different terms for it. I don't think there's one official term as such. But for this one, I'm going to go ahead and go into that single crochet. Down into the stitch it came from. And then I'm going to go ahead and just slide it under a couple of other stitches here to finish it off. There we are. And pull that on through. So for round seven, I will bring back the green and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of a single crochet from the previous round. So again, turn it a little bit here, find a single crochet. Remember these are half double crochets here and they're sort of forming like petals at this point. So find that single crochet, insert the hook, pull up a loop and chain one. That works as our little slip stitch join there. Then I'm going to chain one and make a double crochet spike stitch into the top of the single crochet from round four directly below. So let's look at it. We're on round seven. These little shells were round six. The half double crochets were round five. So that means this green single crochet here is round four. The single crochet chain four loop. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in the top of that stitch, Pull up a loop nice and tall. Again, we don't want to shrink the stitches below at all. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two, and that is a double crochet spike stitch. Then I'm going to half double crochet in the next three half double crochet stitches. So one, two, and three. There we are. I need to pull up just a little bit more yarn. Excuse me. All right. Then in the next stitch, this one right here, I am going to work a double crochet. There we are. Followed by a chain two. Then another double crochet. And a half double crochet. And that's all worked into that same stitch, the fourth half double crochet of those six there, okay? So those are all worked into that same stitch. Then I will work half double crochets in the next two stitches. One and two. And if this seems a little odd and uneven, that's because in this round we're squaring it up. And you can see I've already got a nice corner going on there. So now it's time for another spike stitch, double crochet spike stitch. So I'll yarn over Go down all the way to round four, pull up a nice tall loop, pull through two, and pull through two. Then I am going to half double crochet in the next 
half double crochet stitch there. Let's see, like so. Pull up a little more yarn. Then I'm going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. All right, half double crochet in the next stitch. And then I start over from the beginning again, okay? So that means in, if you're following along with the written pattern, we go back to where the asterisk is in that pattern, or in round seven, I should say. So that means we start with a double crochet spike stitch in round four, followed by half double crochets in the next three. This should all sound a little bit familiar here. It's pretty much exactly how we started the pattern. Let's see, there's our three half double crochets. Then in the next stitch, I'll work that double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and half double crochet, all in that same stitch right there. You can see that's our second corner. So continuing our repeat, we half double crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, work a double crochet spike stitch into round four. And I know I'm going through these a little bit quickly. So if you need to, go ahead and rewind. All right, there's our next spike stitch. Then half double crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in the next four. One, two, Oops, I was leaning on my yarn there. Three, four, and finally half double crochet in the next stitch after that. And then we begin our repeat again from where we made the three, excuse me, we start with next would be a spike stitch, three half double crochets on around just as before. And we continue that so we get our next two corners. So I'll see you at the end of round seven. And here we are at the end of round seven. You can see I've got four corners. There we are. Very nice. And so at the end of round seven, I am going to take out my hook, break the yarn, and take care of that end. Now for this one, again, I know in round eight that the number of stitches that we're working into is going to count. It's going to be important. So rather than working into that single crochet, because we've got an, or excuse me, it's a double crochet spike stitch. Instead of working into that one, I'll go into the half double crochet right next to it and make my stitch there and create a new V, a new front and back loop right over that double crochet spike stitch, effectively hiding the top of it there. There we are. And I can fiddle with it till I get it just right, but for the sake of time, we'll just continue on through here and I'll pull that on through and get it out of the way. All right. So now we're ready to begin round eight, which is the final round of this square. So I've got the end of my orange yarn here. What I'm going to do is going to join to the chain two of a corner, any corner. And here I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Whoops, didn't have a very good grip on that yarn, did I? Let's try that again. There we are, slip stitch. Now I'm nice and firmly joined to that chain two in the corner. Then. I am going to work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in that chain two corner space again, making the new corner here. You can say this, see this one is real loose. I will weave that in, of course, when it's all done. Then I am going to work in the back loop only across towards the next corner. So working in the back loop only, I'm going to single crochet in the next six stitches. And the back loop, of course, is always the one furthest away from you. So I'm going to go under just that one. That's two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Then I'm going to slip stitch loosely 
in the next four stitches because these are unless you're making just one square as a coaster or something like that odds are you're going to be joining it to another square or something else so you want to be able to work into all these stitches so even though we're working slip stitches here you want to make sure they're not pulled too tight so I'm going to insert my hook pull up a loop pull up a loop and if I pause for a moment that helps keep it loose before I pull that on through for a slip stitch so that's one let's do it three more times here pull up a loop pull it on oops pull it on through that's two insert pull up a loop three insert pull up a loop and four <laughs> almost there we go four slip stitches now it's back to single crochets still working in that back loop only one two three four five and six there we are now we're back at that chain two corner space and we don't want to try and work into the back loop here so we're just going to go ahead and work a single crochet chain two single crochet right into that chain two corner space and then we begin again with six single crochets in the back loop only four slip stitches in the back loop only six single crochets and then back to the corner and continue all the way around by working in the back loop only we get this nice front line that sort of frames off the square really well so I will see you at the end of round eight and here we are at the end of round eight you can see I have finished my fourth side here and by working in the back loop only all the way around we've got that line in the green round seven I'm going to go ahead and break my yarn to finish off this square now again like I said you're probably going to be joining this to other squares so you want to maintain your stitch count so if you use this method to finish off rather than a slip stitch and break and weave you could go into this one but that's if you don't pull this real tight you'll be creating another V which will look like another stitch when you're working around so you actually for this one want to go ahead and go into that next that first chain of the chain two which is a little fiddly but when you come when it comes time to join them it'll make it that much easier the other alternative would be to make the V make the the fake V here with your end in that first single crochet of the corner and just pull it really tight so that you can't work into it and try to remember this is a little bit easier even though you're going to the chain of course it's easier with a needle than it is with a hook so it's still not too bad and there we go that is the mini magic mandala square and it is a free pattern on mooglyblog.com if you would like a pattern for a full blanket using the square complete with joining instructions and border then you'll want to look up the magic rainbow baby blanket on mooglyblog.com and even though it's a baby blanket of course it can be made full sized as well so i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you have please do subscribe to our channel and thank you so much for watching